Good morning. I'm here to bring another Sunday School lesson as we've had to unfortunately continue the suspension of our in-person services. And so the unit that uh, our church has been working through as we work through the Lifeway curriculum, the Bible Studies for Life, has, the unit has been Holy Vocabulary. And so the words and the term that we're looking at this morning is called Eternal Life. What does eternal life really mean? We're going to take a good look at that. So if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation. We're going to look at a little bit of chapter 21 and some of chapter 22. So turn to Revelation chapter 21. We're going to look at the first, the first five verses. And so while you're turning there, I want you to ask yourself and consider this question. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Would it be in some exotic location, maybe a tropical uh, area? Maybe it's uh, somewhere where you've longed to travel overseas, or, or maybe it's somewhere even right here in the United States. Maybe uh, it's more of a, a beach area, or maybe a bustling city. Uh, for me personally, I know right here in the Tri-Cities, uh, is, is where I love to be. I love the mountains. I love having four seasons throughout the year. And uh, the only thing that can make it a little bit better would be if there was a beach about 20 minutes away, 15, 20 minutes away, uh, then uh, that would be phenomenal. My family loves to go to the beach and uh, the kids just have an awesome time. Uh, but uh, the, the question I want you to think about is if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? For real estate agents, there's one word that comes up time and time again as they try to sell houses and properties, and that is location. Location, location, location. Right? They're, they're trying to find the, the right fit for you. If you're, if you're looking for a house, if you're purchasing a home, you're, you're trying to find the good neighborhoods, the, the best areas, the, the house with the, the, the correct number of bedrooms and bathrooms and uh, the maybe the yard maybe you want a smaller yard less maintenance maybe you want a bigger yard maybe you want a farm whatever the case may be location 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 and their their job is to try to find the perfect place for you and your family and the the problem with that is though that there's no such thing as perfect there's no such thing as a perfect place Things are going to happen. Things are going to break. Your, uh, your house is going to require maintenance. Things are, are going to happen. Maybe bad neighbors move in a couple of years down the road uh, right beside you or two houses down that start causing issues and you have problems arise. Right? There's no such thing as perfect, a perfect place to live right now because we live in a fallen, sinful world. There's just no, there's no perfect place. There's nothing that exists. However, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have the hope of a perfect place that will and does exist and that we will reside in one day. So if you look at Revelation chapter 21, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5 first. And so John records this, this book and he says in verse 21, chapter, or chapter 21, verse 21, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And so God promises his children an eternal home. John was able to see a glimpse of what heaven is going to be like. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, a holy city, and God has prepared this place for his children. A new heaven and a new earth are going to be far superior to what we now know 
on this planet as we live. And it just pales in comparison. Uh, he, he said, this is a new heaven, something that we haven't even ever uh, fathomed or experienced. There's no way to determine what exactly it's going to be like. Uh, and so, but heaven is going to be amazing. He said, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. God will dwell with men once again, just like he did in person, wrapped in flesh with Jesus. Then we will be able to then dwell in the presence of of God. It won't be God having to empty himself and come to a sinful fallen world. Instead, it'll be that redemption that we are then able to go to the dwelling place of God and experience everything that he has for us. And uh, it's going to be an amazing place. Uh, and, and heaven is going gonna, is gonna to be completely different. It says God, in verse 4, God will wipe away every tear Right? There will be no more death, no sorrow, no pain, no crying, no grief, none of that stuff. Right? Because the, the former things have passed away. There's a holy city, New Jerusalem. It's got perfect harmony. Believers, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we will be able to dwell together, not have any strife, any feuding, any problems, any issues, any arguments. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be absolutely perfect. Culture sometimes may express the concept of heaven as uh, floating around on clouds, playing harps, uh, just having a big rejoicing thing. Some people even think it's going to be boring because they think, well, you know, I, I barely managed to go to church for maybe an hour a week. I can't imagine going to church for an eternity Right, But we know that Jesus has gone, like he said in John chapter 14, verse 2, he said, I will go and prepare a place for you. John, uh, Jesus has already done that, and he's gone and prepared a place for us. He's still working on it. It's not quite done yet. And so, uh, but everything is going to be made new there. What are some of the things you'd like to make, to be made new, to see made new? Maybe, maybe you've lost a loved one recently, and, and you're just tired of the loss and the grief uh, maybe uh, just with all this worry about the coronavirus and the, the anxiety that comes, you're looking forward to one day that there's not going to be anything to worry about because everything is going to be perfect. There's no viruses. There's no diseases. There's no pain. There's no suffering. What, what are you looking forward to, uh, to see made new in heaven? Whatever it is, it's going to be made new because all things are new. The old things, all the old trappings of this sinful world are going to be done away with, and then everything will be made new. John goes on in, in uh, verses 6 through 8, he says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And so he says uh, in, John, in John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus hanging on the cross said, it is finished. And now in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, he says, it is done. Right, and those are a little bit different, but they're similar in that uh, in Revelation chapter 21 marks the the end of redemptive history when Jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished. The work of the sacrificial uh, death so that we could have that atonement and be bought back was completed. Jesus had completed that sacrifice on the cross. And now, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 6, he has completed redemptive history. There is now no more sin. Sin and death and hell have been destroyed. And now there is only eternal life. There's eternal life. Right? The, the word death is defined merely as separation. Physical death describes when, when your soul, your spirit, leaves your body. It is separated away from your body. Spiritual death is when we have a wedge that is separating our soul from an eternally holy God. And so death 
and hell have all been done away with by this point in Revelation chapter 21. And now there is just, just great things to look forward to. Jesus bookends everything. He says, I am the Alpha, the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And then he says, I am the Omega, the last letter of the Greek, Greek alphabet. He says, I am the beginning and the end. I am everything in between. What he began, all things were created by him and for him, and not anything that was created that which was created was created without him. And then at the end, he completes everything, and he recreates, creates a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem. And what's the catch then? What's the catch, right? We're, we're, we're accustomed to something that sounds too good to be true, then it probably is false, right? It, it's probably not true. If it sounds too good to be true, then uh, it's probably not true. But there's no catch. There's no catch at all. This eternal life, this heaven that we have as our eternal home, there's no catch. The only the only condition upon receiving this gift of eternal life is to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And the list that he provides in, in chapter 21, verse 8, uh, the, the cowardly, unbelieving, murderers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars, he's not just talking about specific sins that will co condemn you to the, uh, the lake of fire and brimstone. He's talking about those that choose to remain in their sin rather than asking Christ to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's no catch. Just follow Jesus. Put your faith and trust in him. Do not remain in your sin, but submit, repent, and believe. And so skipping back over to, now to, to chapter 22, we're going to look at the first five verses as we close out. This, this beautiful picture of words is painted by John of what heaven looks like. In verse 1 he says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall see him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun. For the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever." This place is going to be a, a wonderful, wondrous place. Uh, few, few people throughout history have been able to, to truly record that painting of a picture with words. Those literary geniuses, maybe it's uh, some tremendous authors or, or poets, uh, even news, newspaper reporters and, and some of the, especially the old journalism that they used to do, they used to paint these beautiful word pictures that you could read a book or, or listen to, uh, to an audio book or something and just imagine immediately be teleported there. John accomplishes this in Revelation chapter 22. He paints such, such a beautiful picture of words that we can almost imagine being in heaven in the presence of God the Father. John does a great job at painting this picture. So then the question that a lot of people ask about heaven, about eternal life, is what will we be doing there? What, what is there to do? Uh, well, there's three things that we will definitely be doing. The first one is we will be worshiping God. We will be in his presence and just giving him the praise and the honor and the glory that he is so deserving and worthy of because he alone is worthy of all praise and honor and worship. So definitely, we will be first and foremost worshiping God. Secondly, we will be serving God, right? We will still continue to, to serve God by, by ministering and encouraging one another in a perfect, harmonious place, 
as brothers and sisters in Christ, we will be there to continually edify and build one another up, to encourage one another, to serve, to do things for one another. And we will definitely be serving God by serving uh, each other and also just accomplishing the will of God that he has set forward in our lives. And then third, we get to reign with God. Right? We get to rule and reign with him. Now, God is the sovereign ruler above all, but he allows us as his children to, to reign alongside of him. We get to rule and reign with him. So those, that's just a, a brief overview and just kind of a, a, a wide swath of, of what we're going to be doing in heaven, worshiping, serving, reigning with God, all of those things. The question I want you to ask yourself too is, which of the descriptions of heaven is most meaningful to you in some of the, the, the passages that we've looked at this morning? Which one is, is more meaningful? Maybe for you it's no more death, again, because maybe you experienced the death of someone close to you. Uh, maybe it's no crying just because of the sorrows. Maybe it's no more pain. Maybe you've got some physical pains that you deal with day in and day out. And you're looking forward to one day that that's not going to be there anymore. Whatever the case may be, it gives us hope. It gives us something to look forward to. That eternal life. The, the holy place where there's no more sin, no more corruption, but only perfection and holiness. And so... What can we do with what the, the passages that we've looked at this morning? Well, there's three things, and I want you to pick one of these. Now, if you're feeling ambitious, you can pick two or three, but I just want you to focus in on at least one of these throughout this next week. The first thing that you can do is look to Christ. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, establish that today. Repent, ask God to forgive you of your sins, turn away from those sins, and then turn to Jesus as your Savior and make Him the Lord of your life. For if not, you're still dwelling and remaining in your sin. And like, and, and like verse 8 in chapter 21 says, those people that are dwelling in their sin do not have a part in heaven or in eternal life. So look to Christ Turn to Christ for salvation this week. Secondly, one, one thing that you can do is focus on heaven. We as believers in Jesus Christ, if you have given your life to Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you are not a citizen of this earth. We are citizens of heaven. We are just temporary visitors right now. And don't, don't let temporary things consume you. If you turn on the news right now, if you look at your phone and see the notifications blowing up, if wherever you turn, you're going to see a lot of hopelessness. People that are discouraged, especially because of the coronavirus. Not only do we see the, the number of confirmed cases beginning and continuing to, to rise and, and crest. We haven't even experienced what the experts say that peak will be yet. But not and tied to all of those positive uh, tests, we, we also see deaths. And, and that can provide a sense of hopelessness. Uh, if you go to the, the grocery store or the supermarket, you can see that there are shelves that are empty. And that, that can provide you some anxiety of, am I going to have enough food? Am I going to have enough uh, it, just personal household items to be able to last any length of time? Uh, there, there's just anxiety that wells up inside of us during this time. Don't let things, temporary things, consume you. Because our hope is in eternity. It's, our hope is in eternity in Jesus Christ and the hope that he offers us that all of this stuff is going to pass away one day or another. And instead, what God's going to put in place is the eternal home that we have to look forward to. And then finally, the third thing that you can do is invite others to heaven along with you. We can share the gospel. Right? Pray for opportunities to share the gospel with those around you those that you can communicate with. Maybe you can't be in person with them, but you can call them on the phone. You can t send them a text or send them a quick just video message. Uh, maybe you can FaceTime them or, or maybe you can write a letter, uh, whatever, whatever you need to do to reach out to people to share the gospel. Maybe now is the opportunity to, to holler at your neighbor uh, across the yard and to share the gospel with them. Find out if they go to church anywhere, if they have a relationship with Christ. But there are things that we can do even now 
to, to glorify God, to, to put our eyes on eternal life. That's our hope, that's our reward, and that is what we have to look forward to. So I hope this encouraged you this morning. I'm going to close with a quick word of prayer, and then we'll be done. So Father, we thank you for preparing eternal life for us as a reward for our putting for us putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, that we have the hope that there is a place that's better than where we're at right now. The, the blessings that we have right now currently from you, God, pale in comparison to what it will be like to dwell in your presence for all eternity. So God, help us to, to take heart that you have overcome all things, you will overcome all things, and that you're continuing to prepare this place for us. One day, this will all pass away, and we will be in a perfect place in your presence, worshiping you, serving you, and God, just being with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope this morning's lesson was encouraging to you. Uh, we encourage you to continue to stay tuned. We've got our live worship service coming at 1045 this morning uh, on this Palm Sunday morning. Uh, live worship this evening at 7 o'clock and uh, daily devotions posted throughout the week also. So stay tuned. Uh, check us out on our Facebook page. Fa check us out on YouTube. This morning's live stream will be on YouTube Live. There will be a, a link on Facebook that will direct you to the YouTube page. But if you go to, to, to YouTube and you search for First Baptist Church, Bluff City, Tennessee, our channel will pop up and you can follow our live service there. So hope, to, hope that you will join us and we look forward to worshiping with you again soon in person one day. Thank you and have a blessed morning. Mm -hmm.